Hey everyone, Mr P here, Mr Dave and Mr Jethro, we're the geeky guys and today we're looking at Ahsoka, uh, not, not to the person, the TV show, uh, and in fact episode 5 or part 5 as they're calling it, uh, this one called Shadow Warrior. Um, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is a good one. Um, we talked very briefly in the last video about the fact that uh, Hayden Christensen made a quick brief appearance as, uh, as Hayden Christensen, no he didn't, as Anakin Skywalker. Um, in this one, all we get to see a lot more. We do. We're going to come to that in a minute. Um, and Shadow Warrior is very much brings up those uh, visions of like samurai and um, warriors and ninjas and things like that, which is what George Lucas was... Uh, referencing and inspired by for the Jedi uh, yeah. back in the day for the original Star Wars. It kind of links into that quite nicely, that episode title. Yeah. So where did we leave everything last time? <clears throat> it was it was not looking good for our heroes. No. Um, uh, Ahsoka's Ahsoka... going to die. Oh no, Ahsoka's going to die. Hey, you full of the cliff lane, full of parachute. <laughs> okay, that's the Alan Partridge yeah. impression yeah. in there as well. So um, we ain't got a Star Trek reference in yet. We'll yet. Say, yet. Yeah. Um, so Ahsoka has uh, been what we think is struck down. She's gone into the sea. We think, well, we know she's not gone, but it, it appears that she's gone. Uh, uh, Hera has arrived with some of her X-Wing uh, people. Sabine's been taken uh, by Balin uh, and, and the bad guys, and they've jumped now to another galaxy. There's no map, no way to follow them. It all seems a little bit lost. It does. And we get a little bit of this episode where the good guys actually think, crap, we, we are, we don't know what to do yeah, because lost. we've got no map, we don't know where Ahsoka is, we think she's gone, uh, Sabine's gone, what do we do now? And there's a the little bit of sort of trying to find clues, but there really aren't any. No. Um, and... Which sort of fits into the whole, like, uh, if we see the season as like a, a narrative arc, this is going to be the point of... Um, uh, the the crisis point in the middle, the middle of the second act. So, which yeah, we we are right in the middle, aren't we? So yeah, yeah. Now we see a little bit of Sabine on the bad guy's ship on the way there, but that's pretty much not this episode. This yeah. episode is about the good guys sort of regrouping. Yeah, we don't and see them at all. That's not really. I, mean. uh, I thought we saw one shot of them on the bridge or something, but it might have been the previous episode actually. But. We don't see them a lot. Now, it's worth just talking very quickly about uh, Jason Sindilla. So, um, he is the young uh, boy that's the son to Hera, who's come to tell yeah. now. And he's force sensitive. And he picks up the fact that Ahsoka is still alive. Yeah, he's kind of got, he's force sensitive and his father was a Jedi and... He's looking at the sea and he says, listen to it, I can hear lightsabers. Now, it's worth now going back to what happened to Ahsoka. She's through into the sea, we think she's gone, but she's not. And she almost goes into a, not the afterlife, but she almost goes into, I'm not quite sure what you would call it. Like the void between, isn't between it? worlds, between between life and death. Purgatory, maybe, just, just, just mm. this void between, like a waiting room, I suppose. Which does appear in Rebels, am I right? Yes. It's either Rebels or Clone Wars, it appears in, um, because they're after some kind of uh, tablet or artifacts or something, uh, and they find this place and it bridges lots of gaps between lots of mm. places. But anyway, th they're in this, let's call it a conduit between, between realities, if you like. I say they, that gives it away what I'm going to say next, doesn't it? So uh, Ahsoka wakes up and finds that Anakin's there. Yeah. So we get a proper... Hayden Christensen, uh, Anakin Skywalker on screen, and um, this whole interaction between them where he basically says there's more to learn. Yeah. And then, and then, we get the flashback. So we actually flash back to the Clone Wars, and he's teaching her these lessons, and in order to do that, he takes her back. So we get to see a young Ahsoka with Anakin, in the Clone Wars fight mm. here. And that was amazingly done. And I want them to go back now into the entire Clone Wars live action. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it, it was amazingly done. well done. Well, the first time we've seen uh, like live action clones, because correct me if I'm wrong, 
but in the in the films themselves, they're all CG. So uh, you're talking like Attack of the Clones, Attack the, of the, the Clones, yeah. Revenge of the Sith. They were all uh, they were all CG. I didn't realise all of them were CG. I mean, I, I imagine most of them were, but the, you surely had some of them. I remember Commander Cody was all CG, and he oh, was yeah. like the most like. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't Please know. fact check me. We, we're gonna. We, we'll. Do you want to weigh in this? I know that there was a, a big thing about the amount of CGI in the prequels. Yeah, um, it that's was something all that is talked about quite a bit. Screens. Lots of blue and green screens, and not a lot of reality, not a lot of yeah. physical um, effects or physical um, puppets or anything like that. Does that extend to the clones themselves? Do you, do you think? Or? Mm, probably. I think they probably were all CG. I think. At the time, I think they just thought if you can get away with doing it by computers, we'll just do it by computers because it's just quicker. Yeah, and kind of that was the way cinema was going at that time, wasn't it? And I think I we mean, were just going with that trend. I now you've got the uh, the, the the what's it the, the volume the volume mm. uh, wall uh, to film with, which is obviously what they use for this. But oh, I mean, don't you just want them to go back and do Clone Wars now live action? That's just amazing. It would be. Just going back to the volume, yes. um, somebody was telling me the other day that apparently in 2001 Space Odyssey they actually used a form of that technology where they had painted backgrounds mm. um, so, that, so they would have like um, like a little set at the front that was Ooh. real and the rest of it would all be like uh, painted backgrounds and stuff and they used certain cameras and lenses to make it look like it was in a real big location. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, with the uh, centrifuge bit, they they had that spin as well. Yeah. I think they did something similar with Interstellar, which was probably influenced by two thousand one. But yeah, I mean, especially the bit with like the like the sequences with like the apes and stuff. Mm. Um, it looked like there was in like a big kind of like canyon, big desert area, and it was like only a little bit, and the rest of it was like a painted yeah. background. So they've kind of uh, made that technology a lot better, and yeah. Mm. I mean, now it's a video wall that will move, and, yeah. and the video yeah. will change, and, and the the aspect ratio change, the yeah. depth will change. Sorry, uh, 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 as well. They can have the lighting so the shadows look correct and things like that now, can't they? I mean, they they just just to quickly put a Superman reference in because you know I do like Superman. So in the original Superman film in uh, from the nineteen seventies, uh, there's a sequence where after they've done the aerial flying with Lois and Superman. He drops her off, says goodbye, flies off, and the camera pans without a break to the door where Clark's knocking on the door and walks in. And it was a big thing at the time of how did they do that? Because there was no CGI. And yeah. again, it was almost like what you'd said. It was almost like they got a volume because what they did is they actually projected onto a screen in the background the whole, yeah. right, I'm going now by waves and, and flies off. That was all on a screen. So you actually, they were videoing an actual screen of the, a video of what they'd already shot. And then they panned across onto the live set then where, where Clark uh, walks in. Really good. Uh, and, and that's almost like a, a first sort of use of like a volume type idea, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but we digress. Yes. Um, yeah. So young uh, uh, Ahsoka Tano uh, played by uh, Ariana Greenblatt. Fantastic right. performance. Yes, very mm. good. Uh, hopefully we get more flashbacks because she was really good and she was really good at playing sort of the little snips yeah mm. uh, which is what Anakin used to call her so the ATAT uh, ATTEs and there uh, we saw the Republic gunships yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah really and cool, Captain Rex yes yeah so the, and, the... oh and just to build off not just the uh, the early Clone Wars clones but also the later Clone Wars clones as well so we see the two different they switched types. from one battle to another yeah. to show her because it was obviously this is not a dream sequence, but it's a sort of an out of body experience. Go back and put yes. her into that thing. Yeah. And I really, really like that because that was just a very subtle way to indicate the passage of time. How do you know when you are? Look at the clones. Look at the troopers. Mm. Yeah. You do wonder going forward as well now. Uh, Soka's had that really. Sorry, connection. just interrupt. They they also did that with a lightsaber. Because she, to start with, she had the, the one green lightsaber. Then a bit later on, she had the two lightsabers. Yeah. So they did it with the lightsabers as well. Sorry, Dave. Uh, right. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the, one of the interesting things about the, this episode, she's got this new renewed link with Anakin. Um, now, they've reconnected together. Are we going to see him in the series going forward as a force ghost who's going to pop up every now and again to come and help her and advise her? 
I don't know. I mean, he's come back for this episode. Whether we see him again now, who knows? I know that fans, you mentioned in the previous video that, you know, that they were a little bit after the prequels. Mm. Uh, certainly Hayden Christensen, fans weren't that much of a fan. Uh, and it's it might just be this subconscious sort of, you just saw him got more evil, 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 and he did it so well that mm. uh, as fans they just didn't like him because yeah. subconsciously he was evil and he did it so well. But now we've got this renewed sort of, you know, he's already gone, he's already died, if you like, and yeah. gone into the Force and become a Force ghost. Yeah. And uh, that obviously now is now he's able to switch because he did appear more evil as a Force ghost. We'll call him Force ghost in this. To emphasise a point mm. yeah. until she learnt the lesson she was supposed to learn and then he just reverted straight back to good, nice Anakin again. And, and, yeah. and fantastic performance by everybody in that. I, I, you really felt like, especially, you know, Rosario Dawson was, was, was Ahsoka and she'd just gone through that journey. Uh, it was yeah. really good. Yeah, I think, I think that's um, a good point. Now, I think he's coming back a bit redeemed now as well, isn't mm. he? Um, so I think people have a, will have a different attitude to that, that character and Hayden Christian maybe going forward. Because again, at this point now, he's done the Vader thing. He's been bad, you know. He's mm. been Dark Helmet. A few, a few, <laughs> a few genocides. Yeah, you know, whatever. Um, you know, you're a Force Ghost now. You, you came good in the end, uh, and all that's been pushed to one side, and uh, it's all forgiven. Is that right? Is that how it works? Water under the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. Another All question. lava under the bridge. Hera. Yes. Uh, with her son. Yeah. Her son doesn't look very green. Right. Uh, just the green hair. Just the... <laughs> well, we're going to get into genetics now. We're not really. Right. Uh, so no, I'm, I'm just, you've I'm got just... XX and XY chromosomes. Well, not when it comes to that. Well, I mean, it, it is when you come to cats, but yeah. Hum, uh, Genetic bot, makeup, things. all things in the universe, the entire universe are made up of a certain set of elements. I'll, I'll send you some Brian Cox videos to talk we'll about later. We'll check with our professor now, friend I'm, and the, come back to you. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I was wondering, no, my question, my question was like, was uh, was he her biological son? And I uh, does that, oh, also with Ahsoka, because in... So. I believe in, so, in, in, in the fifth episode later on, like, we see her without her little uh, thing over her. Yes, which did look weird. Things. It looked weird because it didn't because uh, uh, it's like oh you look different. I can't put my finger on it. And I saw later. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. Those things. What what are those like? Things? I have they, no idea. I are, don't are they, know they, what they do. Are they tentacles? Are they? Is it hair? Does it grow? I, I think the actual big white bits are proper like tentacly type things. That's just part of who they are. But the actual headpiece they put over them. With the, oh, I'm, I'm talking about the tentacles. Headphones on. I don't know what they do because Hera's got one too, of course. So I, I don't know why. Uh, I, I have no idea. I mean, with Hera, I think it's just probably just to hide the seam for the prosthetic, but. Uh, probably, but in the law, what 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 was the, what was it? We'll put that on another. It's another thing to go on the list for Rob, uh, who's our Star Wars expert. Uh, I I, think, add it to the list. Yeah. I think what we're going to have to do is write all these down, and we're going to have to get Rob to to come on on our brand new show, which is coming out very soon later on. Spoiler alert! Yeah, uh, and we'll get him to come on the show and uh, and talk to us and look back at Ahsoka, and he can answer all these questions for us. Yeah, and. We're going to do the Family Guy uh, Star Trek quote now because she said we get Star Trek in. We're going to bring him here and he's going to ask all our questions. Well, there are Star Wars questions. All the Star Wars questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, like you say, going back to where uh, Hera's son, he's force sensitive. He is within the crashing of the waves, the clashing yeah. of lightsabers. Hera can't hear it because she's not force sensitive particularly. She, I think she does hear it. Yeah, not as well at as the him. end, and, and she hears it when we hear it. So what happens yeah. is you get this lovely transition of audio where it's just waves, waves, and a, and a slight crash. That's not just a wave; it's a lightsaber, yeah. and that dulls down until you can actually hear the lightsabers crashing. Because she is actually sparring with Anakin, Anakin. Mm. in this sort of void area, um, which we'll find out what it is. We'll put it on the Rob list. Yeah, definitely. Um, We've only seen up to this part now. Yeah. We, we've not seen any more. Uh, this week, in fact, 
uh, well, I mean, we're recording uh, this on a Tuesday, so the new episode's coming out tomorrow. It is. What do we think's coming? We've not been able to say this yet because we've seen all of them, but what do we think's coming next? Where are they going? We've had five, we've got three episodes to go. Yeah. What do we think's coming? We don't know. What do you think, Jethro? Oh, predictions. Yeah. Uh, the next episode, episode six, is going to be uh, focused on like the villains where they go to the other galaxy and set another big bad. And the next two are going to be like almost like, like a two part of finale where, you know, pew pew, pew explosions pew, pew. and uh, things get resolved. That's yeah. my prediction. Very, very, very vague. Uh, Okay. That's yeah. all you're getting. Okay. I mean, I'd say basically, you know, it's a race to get to Thrawn and Ezra to the uh, to the other galaxy. If they're there. I think if they're there, um, they will be, I think. Um, I think like Jethro says, probably the baddies will get there first. So sort of Balin and uh, Shinta will get there first. Um, the sister of Dathomir and they'll be trying to bring Thrawn back to restart the Empire, re-empower the Empire. And... I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have Ezra Bridger in it. I think they'll, they'll end up having him there. I think at this point it would be remiss if they yeah, didn't. I think they'll do that. Chekhov's gone. Yeah. And then, of course, obviously, we didn't mention it, obviously, at the end of the episode, I was they, just they, did, come to that. they did find a way uh, to get to the other galaxy. And what's nice map is was damaged. they used the way in which they uh, did it in Rebels. So at the end well, of Rebels, the, the, the space whales sort of... Because the space whales can travel... Uh, through hyperspace on yeah. their own naturally. They can create their own field and go. So Ahsoka kind of uses the force to communicate with them and say, we need to go and help our friend. Can you help us? So they actually, she actually puts the ship inside the mouth of one of the whales uh, and then, then they're transported. So we, yeah. we think that they're going to the same place and following the other ship. Yeah. Uh, which is the same way the whales went in the first place when they took uh, Thrawn's uh, D Star Destroyer and and uh, Ezra, Ezra Bridger went as well. So, because he kind of used the same thing, I think he used the force on the whales, if I remember correctly. Uh, you watched the last two episodes. Yeah, it? I think he used so, yeah. the force. It's been a while since I watched it. But, so, uh, we, we end this episode with kind of... Um, they, they, they've gone, that's it. But yeah. all of our other heroes now aren't going there. Because no. they can't get there. No. So you've only got Ahsoka, Hyung, the droid, uh, and obviously she's going to meet up with Sabine. So it's we've got three episodes left. Mm. And also we've got the other thing going on where Hera is in trouble a little bit. She's in a bit of bother because she's kind of dragged them over yeah. um, into this battle from which they can't see a way of winning and getting what they want. Ahsoka and Sabine have disappeared and she's trying to, you know, kind of discuss with the politicians what she wants to do for the mission. She wants to complete it and they're saying, well, we're not going to help you because you're in a position where you're lost and you're putting the rebellion in, in danger. Um, and so basically she, she's kind of in a place where she's being recalled and explain her actions and they're kind of still a bit lost, like you said. Are they going to end on a cliffhanger? That's the question. Um, I think if anything from the fan reactions that are people, people want more. Uh, is Hera, is Hera going to get the, the Republic together to mount a defence ready just in case Thrawn comes back? Will it be a case that they find them uh, and Ezra that they end up coming back to this galaxy? I think that's got to happen. But if it does, will they then, will they then just get here and that they meet with resistance and we have a big battle at the end? I don't know. We don't know, but I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just guessing. I mean, mm. or, or is it that we just, or will they do it the other way around? Will they do it so that they come back and we leave our heroes behind again? But they've kind of done that already. Mm. So maybe yeah, I don't think we'll do that. We don't know. All we do know is uh, that uh, in, in our timeline here, where we're filming uh, tomorrow, is the new episode, episode six. So we'll find out then uh, what's happening. Uh, let us know what you think, of course, in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you soon.